Decadence is defined as the process of falling away or declining from a prior state of excellence, vitality or prosperity. Decadence was a cultural attitude manifested in the late 19th century, especially in France and Britain. Decadence believed that certainty in knowledge, science, morality and society was gone, thus demanding a new attitude in life and art to compensate for the loss of certainty. Decadence's reaction to the social and intellectual instability which developed as a result of industrialization and the secularizing influence of society. Decadence can be viewed as a reaction against conventional values as modernity wore away the confidence and hubris associated with progress. Decadence dealt with 19th century dilemmas such as the religious crisis of faith, the alienation of the individual and the crisis of self-indulgence as a result of the weakening of moral values among the upper classes. The term became associated with authors and artists who saw inspiration in aestheticism or art for art's sake. In reaction to the naturalism of the European realists, the decadence espoused that art should exist for its own sake, independent of moral and social concerns. They aspired to set literature and art free from the materialistic preoccupations of industrialised society. In Morbid Colours was an attempt to define the concept of decadence in the visual arts in the period 1880 to 1914. Decadent visual art has been described as a period of the innermost self, destroyed by hysteria, for which the decadent tragic vision of the life of a painter, printmaker or sculptor finds its themes in horror, corruption, complicated nightmares and cruel visions. Decadence in art originates through a combination of the extremes of naturalism and symbolism. The portrayal of the horror and madness of the modern world became a key theme. Decadence no longer had utopian visions of change, but only a grimace of ridicule and longing for isolation. The modern world became a world of the average, a world without great deeds but growing number of horrors. The movement can hardly be called a homogeneous group because of the differences between the individual poets, but there are some common features. Decadence can be considered the last era of the Romantics, particularly influenced by the poetry of Blake, Coleridge and Keats. They were also influenced by Swinburne in their lack of morality, Walter Pater in the language of the Pre-Raphaelites, and the Gothic, especially the poetry and fiction of Edgar Allan Poe. The epithet was first applied in the 1880s to a group of self-conscious and flamboyant French poets who in 1886 published the journal Le Décadent. In the 1890s, the term was used in the condemnation to characterise the artist's moral and spiritual depravity and decay due to the erosion of moral, ethical and sexual traditions. In England, the decadent movement was represented by Oscar Wilde, Ernest Dawson and the writers of The Yellow Book. Ernest Dawson was an English poet, novelist and short story writer who became an active member of the Rhymers Club a group of writers that included W. B. Yeats and Arthur Simons. The Rhymers Club was an exclusively male organisation aimed at the duplication of the artist, artistic atmosphere of the Parisian literary cafes and salons, writing pieces devoid of Victorian rhetoric and moralising. In Britain, this was a great period for literary magazines and manifestos. The Yellow Book, the Century Guild Hobby Horse and the Savoy include some of them. The Savoy was edited by Arthur Simons and was a magazine of literature, art and criticism, published in 1896 in London. The publisher was Leonard Smithers, who described the magazine as a manifesto in revolt against Victorian materialism. Another important late Victorian magazine was the Century Guild Hobby Horse. The magazine ran from 1884 to 1894 and spanned a total of seven volumes and 28 issues. Unlike its successor, the Hobby Horse was not solely committed to an elite aestheticism. Its pages were filled with essays arguing for recognition on the vital social role of art and artists. The Century Guild Hobby Horse has helped cement what purpose art served in the English Victorian community. The Yellow Book was another leading journal published in London from 1894 to 1897 by Elkin Matthews and Jane, John Lane, associated with asceticism and decadence. Aubrey Beardsley has been credited with the idea of the Yellow Paper, the association with illicit French fiction of the period. Such books in Paris were wrapped in yellow paper to alert the leader of their lascivious content. When the yellow book first appeared, it was met with condemnation as it was interpreted as a deliberate and dangerous assault upon the respected codes of decency. The yellow book owed much of its reputation to Beardsley, who re re repeatedly attempted to shock public opinion. Beardsley openly mocked the Victorian artistic ideal, which he considered to be both prudish and hypocritical. Beardsley's artwork was perhaps the most controversial aspect of the yellow book. His style was thought both highly unnatural and grotesque. The Yellow Book is also referred to many decadent authors such as Oscar Wilde. In An Ideal Husband, Mrs. Sheevely says, I've never read a blue book, I prefer books in a yellow cover. While in Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray, the book sent by Lord Henry to Dorian Gray, which contributes considerably to Dorian's descent into corruption, is also described as being bound in yellow paper. Oscar Wilde is one of the principal exponents of the new aesthetic in England, following the ideas of the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, but going further into the realms of asceticism. According to his theory, the artist was free and superior to other men. 
Artists avoided the common everyday life to look for an escape into an idealised beauty that existed principally in the imagination. At the turn of the 1890s, he incorporated his ideas about the supremacy of art and the themes of decadence, duplicity and beauty to his only novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray. Reviewers immediately criticised the novel's decadence and homosexual allusions. The Daily Chronicle, for example, called it unclean and poisonous. To the form of the Victorian melodrama, Wilde contributed the figure of the dandy, another figure associated with decadence. In Wilde's work, the book Dandy is a witty, overdressed, self-styled philosopher who speaks in epigrams and paradoxes and ridicules hypocrisy of society's moral arbiters. The dandy pretends to be all about surface, which makes him seem trivial, shallow and ineffectual. Yet the dandy can often prove to be deeply moral and essential to the happy resolution of the plot. In modern... The model dandy in British society was George Brunel from 1778 to 1840, an undergraduate student at Oxford. His habits of dress and fashion were much imitated, especially in France. There, dandies sometimes were celebrated in revolutionary terms as self-created men of consciously designed personality radically breaking with past traditions. On a different note, decadence is also apparent in Marxism ideology. According to Lenin, capitalism had reached its highest stage and could no longer provide for the general development of society. He predicted reduced vigour in economic activity, reflecting capitalism's decreasing capacity to provide for social needs, which would lead to the socialist revolution in the West. To Lenin, World War I proved the decadent nature of capitalist countries, as it showed the decline of civilization, preceding its fall in the cycle of history. In the late 19th century, there was a strong sense that Europe had reached the, age of an, the end of an age. This picture of a gyre shows how history was considered by many in this period. The legacy of decadence can be seen in the experiments of modernism. The influence of decadent writers can be seen in the works of poets and novelists such as Ezra Pound, T.S. Eliot, Yeats and D.H. Lawrence. Especially the loosening rhythm and syntax from the hold of the rhetoric can be said that Dawson paved the way for Eliot, thus decadence acts as a transition between romanticism and modernism.